the basics. So these following steps are truly the basics for anyone selling their house. First of all, declutter. Get rid of things. I cannot press this one enough. You don't want people to get in your house and be, you know, thinking only about like, oh, look, they have piles in the garage. Oh, the garage is too tiny. Oh, there's like a pod outside. Don't do the pod outside, people, okay? This is another little trick here. I know I'm gonna get some burnt from this or people are gonna call me and like be all nasty about my comment. But I can tell you one thing, and I'm giving you that from the prospective buyer point of view when I'm taking them to your house. If you declutter your house and it's beautiful and it's clean and it's painted, but you have a pod in your driveway, I can tell you right now, you're telling buyers that you don't have enough space in your house to get all your stuff in. This is a real trick. So if you do this, because there are things that you don't want to get rid of, I totally understand, you love them, they're sentimental, whatever. It's beautiful, it's great, you want to keep them, you put them in a pod. What I'm telling you to do, get the pod out of your driveway. And then you get the pod back in your driveway when you're sold. And you know what? Whatever people think after you're sold, it is what it is. So that way you keep your stuff and it's a small, small expense that will pay you tenfold at the end. Fix all the little items that you meant to fix for the last X years. The little loose dripping faucet, the loose handle when you get in the house. All these things don't seem like a lot, but they add to a lot of work. Uh, for someone that's actually coming in looking at your house. Again, this is a small, small detail that's gonna pay tenfold. Same thing with the paint. Some people are like, oh my God, I painted two years ago and I totally understand. Painting is not cool. I don't like to paint. But paint is what's the cheapest fix for any homes. When your paint is neutral and fresh, if this is the only thing you can do or afford to do, I would suggest going with that to begin with. So little tricks for the actual moving day or a couple days before. Uh, this one, I personally use them myself when I moved a couple of times, and especially if uh, you're moving through a company, DND, RCMP, CBSA, every company that are using moving companies to pack, load, and unpack your stuff. Make little videos of all your appliances in working order. That works for TV, computer, washing machine, fridge, anything that you're taking with you, make sure you document that they are in working order. If you can do that while there's people from that company in your home, it's even better. So that way they cannot come back to you and say, oh my God, I don't know, maybe you, you did that video two months ago when, and then your washer broke and we packed it and it was broken. So that's my little two cents about that. Second, take pictures of part of your furniture. Um, take picture of your sofa, which legs are going to that sofa, all that kind of stuff. This is very good. You can even put them in like a folder on your phone or anything like this. When you undo furniture, put all nuts and bolts in small plastic bag and then tape that plastic bag to the piece of furniture that these little things belong to. It's gonna save you so much time when you're on the other uh, side of the spectrum, you're in your new home, you're trying to build your bed or whatever it is. That's gonna make sure that you're not losing them Another little trick that I've used for my own move over the years is you have to pack two boxes. And the first one would be the box that you have everything that's very important to you that would be extremely painful if you lose. What I mean by that is passports, birth certificate, medication that you need on a daily basis, any essential for your pets, children, whatever that belongs to you that you need to keep at all time. You don't want to take the chance and have that packed into the moving truck because we all know that when COVID happened, some moving trucks were in um, storage for days and days and days. Therefore, people lost documents, need to order new ones because you need to have your new driver's license, so on and so forth. So that would be 
just the start of your box number one. Box number two would be the box that you have toilet paper roll, cleaning supplies, empty garbage bag. And people are laughing about that, but I cannot tell you how many sellers are actually leaving with their toilet paper roll. The day you move into your new home and you have children, movers, yourself that need to use the bathroom and don't have toilet paper roll, you're in the mid middle of Ammons Plains and you need 15 minutes to get to a convenience store, can, you know, kind of 